You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com and today I'm going to show you what I call the Midas Touch and it's a few different ways to make your embellishments golden. So what I've got is I'm working on a relatively uh, simple card. You can see I've got the background done here and what I need uh, to make the whole thing come together is a few gold touches. It really needs to sort of bling it up a bit. So I have a variety of common embellishments here, the kind of thing that we all have in our craft stash, leaves, flowers, die cut shapes. And what I'm going to do is use some other common products that you may already have in your craft stash to change the color on these and make them all gold so that they match. So the first thing I've done is I've used my lovely little die to cut some pieces out of some card scraps. Now I love using scrapbook paper or leftovers. Uh, because it's a little bit thicker than your average cardstock and it means that you can bend it and it takes um, sort of curling and shaping a little bit better. See how easy that was? And I've got this beautiful shape in my leaf now. I've got some scrap lace, little bits of scrap lace, uh, one of these very cute little um, numbered paper clips and a few little tiny flowers from I Am Roses little prima leaves and a larger prima leaf. Now this one doesn't really need much done to it as you can see it's gorgeous the way it is. Um, it's about as sparkly as I would have made it had I made it for myself. So I'll just put this one aside. This first product is great for adding over Lindy's Stamp Gang sprayed papers or anything that's already got some colour. It's a Delicata ink pad and it's just gorgeous. This is my go-to ink pad when I'm doing background stamping because it's got such a gorgeous subtle colour. I really love it. So just ink up your stamp. You can already see how beautiful that is. Now if you haven't got one of these Delicata ink pads, I would absolutely say go and get one. Now I don't say that about things very often, but these are beautiful and I haven't come across anything that's better. I've had it for about 18 months now. It hasn't dried out, it hasn't gone tacky, it hasn't gone sticky, I haven't had to re-ink it every 20 seconds. It's lovely. Um, now depending on the paper you're using it on, it is quite a subtle effect. It's certainly not a bright in your face kind of a gold. Um, I would probably use a different product if you were looking for that kind of an effect. Maybe not even an ink pad. But if you're just looking for a beautiful, subtle gold shimmer, then the Delicata is the one to grab. You need to go and clean this off straight away, otherwise it can make a bit of a mess. The second product I'm going to use to colour my embellishments gold is Distress Paint from Tim Holtz. This stuff has so many different ways to use it, it makes it a really versatile product and I love that. Give the Distress Paint a really good shake. And then I'm just going to grab the flowers. Now, if I'd known I was going to do this, I wouldn't have cut the stems off. And I'm just going to dip the paper flower into the Distress Paint. Dip each of the flowers and then leave them aside to dry. While these are drying, I'm going to colour the leaves. Now, this will kind of flatten out the Prima leaves a bit, so it's not ideal, but we'll fix that later. Pop the little sponge top back on the Distress Paint and just cover them with it. As the leaves dry, you can use your fingers to bend them to shape. Because the paint is seeping into the paper, they'll actually hold that shape pretty well once they're fully dry. Now, I'm also going to add the Distress Paint to a small piece of lace I've got here. I find that the more embellishments you have, the more texture, the better it looks. There we go, and just leave that to dry. Now one of the really nice things about the Distress Paint is that you can dry it with a heat gun, so I'm going to do that now. Next, I'm going to be using embossing powder. I'll add this to a few new embellishments and add it over the top of some of the things I've covered with the Distress Paint. Now what I'm going to do to these is cover them in Versmark. I've got the King Midas Gold from Lindy Stamp King. Now the nice thing here is because that underneath colour 
is a little bit similar to the background colours I've used. If the whole thing's not covered 100% completely, it's not going to matter. In fact, it might even look nice. Alright, excess goes back into the bottle for next time. Back out with the heat gun. I'm going to add a second layer of embossing powder while the first is still warm to build up the embossing powder and fill in any patchy bits. Now adding that second coat while the first one is still uh, hot means that the second coat will stick on the top. Okay, so that's the leaves done. You can see that's got a beautiful gold sheen on it now and when you tilt it, it's still a little bit blue underneath. Now that's because um, if these had been white to start with, you would just see the gold from the Lindy Stamp Gang. But because they had a slight blue tinge underneath and this gold embossing powder is slightly translucent, you get a hint of the colour underneath, which I think is going to suit the card quite well. At this point, I've decided that adding gold over something that I've already made gold might look really lovely with this embossing powder. So I've added some gold embossing powder over the top of the lace that I'd previously colored with the distress paint. Wow, what can I say? It looks like you've dipped it in molten gold. It is stunning. So after doing the little piece of lace and having it turn out so well, I've decided to add a little Versamark to the tips of the flowers, roll them in the embossing powder to give them a molten gold edge on each of these little roses. And it looks gorgeous. Now the reason I've done this is so that I get layers of gold but not something that all looks exactly the same. I find that to get a really interesting pretty card you need to have um, areas of difference between each of the elements so if you dipped everything in the gold distress paint it would just kind of look flat towards the end so even with embellishments I like to layer. These also now look like they have molten gold on them just super stunning. I highly recommend you try the Lindy's Stamp Gang King Midas Gold Embossing Powder over the top of your Distress Paint, which is tarnished brass. That's what I've used. It really looks amazing. See that? Isn't that stunning? Really, really nice. Now the last thing I'm going to do is colour change this cute little paper clip. And the way to do that is to heat this up and then dunk it into your embossing powder. So I'm just going to heat this up. I'm holding it with some tweezers so I don't burn my fingers. And it might take a couple of dips to work. Whatever you do, do not touch this to see if it's hot. I can't recommend that is a bad idea enough. Okay, dunk it. You see how that's turning it gold? Now the reason I shake it here is just to get rid of any of that excess embossing powder that's in the middle. I think I might have taken a bit too much off there. So I'm just going to dunk this again, but a bit lighter this time. That's better. Now the reason I'm holding it upside down while it dries is because if I hold it the right way up, it's quite warm embossing powder can sort of migrate towards the back. So holding this upside down just until it's a little bit drier ensures that I get a beautiful coating on the front. I know it sounds a bit counterintuitive but it's the truth I promise. Next I'm going to use a wax paste product called Inca Gold to add a little bit of metallic to a flower that I've already colored. 
Now, the wonderful thing about Inca Gold is you can apply it lightly to just pick out the texture in whatever it is you're coloring, or you can apply it with a really heavy hand and color the entire object gold. So it gives you a little bit of leeway, a little bit of difference in how you apply it. It means it's quite versatile. So what I'm doing here is applying it very lightly to the flower and it just picks up the texture in those petals. Um, I'm also applying it to a couple of the layers of the flower, which is that netting between each of the paper layers, and it looks great. And this is how I've used all those individual embellishments that I've added the gold to. Now, as I said at the beginning of this clip, I've started with a base sprayed with the Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays, which gave me a gorgeous shimmer to start with. But sometimes when you have a shimmer, you can't put more shimmer with it, but metallics work beautifully. So that's what I've done. I've used the same pink to spritz this Lisa Gibbons flower from Prima. I've added a little bit of gold metallic wax to the flower just to highlight, and of course some stickles, because you know I like the sparklies. I've got my embossed leaves here which looks stunning if you turn them one way you can just see the blue underneath if you turn them another way they're just gold shimmer so pretty I've got the little piece of lace that I've done here with gold leaves this yummy yummy leaf from Prima there can't ever be enough bling but I think this comes close to it <laughs> um, my embossed paper clip just here with my little number four and of course I've got my stamped backgrounds. I hope this has given you a few ideas about how to colour your embellishments and, and make them match your project a bit better. Now of course these products can also be used in so many other ways and the reason I've chosen these particular ones is because you probably have some or all of them already. So I hope you've liked my colour combination here and have a fantastic week. Bye! Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.